Welcome now, dear friends, to the Wednesday edition of Fresh Bread. Hey, we're in the middle of the week. It is Wednesday, September 27th, 2023. Hey, we're getting close to the end of the month. How about that? Wow, September. Love September. You know, we're in fall now, of course, and hopefully you're having a really good fall. I would just love to sit down over some coffee with uh, several of you sometime and just talk about the things God is doing uh, and has done this year. It's been... I would just say a remarkable year in so many ways, and, and they're just, it almost brings me to tears, the things that have transpired this year, and um, just so grateful to the Lord, and been, been some ups and been some downs, but through it all, God has just shown himself so many times to be so faithful and good, in spite of my own weakness and failures and things I wish I could have done better, that weren't really necessarily, <laughs> I guess, I can't really call them sins. I can't call them, you know, things I did that were absolutely wrong. They were just things I wish I would have zigged instead of zagged. I wish I would have turned left instead of right. There were just a few of those. And one of these times I'm going to share those with you. I just feel like some people I would feel comfortable sharing this with. And and I've shared some of this with a few people, especially my wife. I'm so thankful for her that I can tell her things. I don't I don't dump on her. I try not to tell her every little thing. Kind of like we said yesterday, I've tried to really watch my tongue and and not say everything that I want to say, especially if it's of a negative nature maybe or it's a critical or or just an observation that could be taken wrong. I just try to keep my mouth shut on that. Move on. I'm going to tell you something. The more we feed into a, a negative situation, the bigger it grows. So whatever you feed is going to grow. If you feed a problem, it's going to grow. If you feed a something, you, you it's like a criticism, it's going to grow. Just stay focused on the Lord. Like I said in church uh, a week or so ago, you know, the, the when you're looking at yourself, and, and, and I was mentioning in the context of, does the Bible say we should forgive ourselves? I don't see anywhere in the Bible that says we should forgive ourselves because I don't think that's the issue. The issue is Christ forgives us, and then we receive that forgiveness, and we are f- totally forgiven. So it doesn't matter what I do. You see what I'm saying? Don't, don't get hung up on yourself. Get self out of the picture. I have been crucified with Christ. So the, the life I live now in the body, I no longer live to myself, but I live it to God who loved me and gave himself for me on the cross. I do not live for me. And the more you think about yourself, the more detrimental it is to your spiritual growth. I don't know how to get that word out. You know, one of these days, I think the gloves are finally going to come off and I can really get up there and start preaching. But these are the things I feel like I should say. Maybe I should just do this, sit in a chair on a Sunday morning and just free flow like this, you know, because that's where my heart is. I just, you know, maybe I'll try it some Sunday and see how it goes. I don't know. You're, you're probably, you and two others are probably the only ones listening to this right now. So if it happens, you won't be surprised. Everybody else will be shocked and horrified, you know, and dismayed or whatever the word would be. Hallelujah. Um, we'll see. Got some other, you know, one of the things I was thinking was maybe in, in the cold months, maybe sometime around Advent or Christmas is to start having services downstairs in the, uh, in the fellowship hall, I just have to make sure that we keep the, the furnace turned off because I, that blower is so loud down there. I can't even hear myself think. And we have the speaker up. And it's just, we could really change things up down there. And and that way we don't have people trying to navigate icy cold stairs or slippery stairs in this cold weather. They can just come in and they don't take the elevator. There's restrooms down there. We can have coffee in the back. Um, so pray with me that the church will be open to that. Will you? Uh, we could try it for three months. You know, we could do December, January, February. We could we could do it longer than that. Um, I don't know. Think about it. I think it's worth a try. Well, anyhow, praise God. I'm so glad you're with me. We're again on Wednesday, Fresh Bread here again, the 27th of September, 2023. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to get through 1 Peter 4 and 5 in the next two days, so, uh, three days actually, including today. So I'm going to read through about half of this, and then we'll move on. Let's go. First uh, Peter 4, 1. Here we go. So it's, the little title is Living for God in the New Living Translation. It says, So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourself with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You've had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy. You've had enough of it, it says. No more. Hallelujah. 
their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things like they do. So they slander you. They're not going to understand you. Be how I would even interpret that. But remember that they will have to face God. He stands ready to judge everyone, both the living and the dead. What does that tell me real quick? I'm just going to make a real quick comment. We're responsible for ourselves. I can't handle whatever other, other people do. Um, I, I pray that I can influence them in some way, shape, or form. But they're, they're going to answer to God. And i got to let God take care of that. Let God be God. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. Although they were destined to die like all people, and they now live forever with God in the Spirit. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love conquers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God. Through Jesus Christ, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. And that concludes the first part of 1 Peter chapter 4. That's verses 1 through 11. We'll pick it up from there tomorrow. And friends, thanks for joining me. God bless you. Have a good rest of the day here on Wednesday. We'll see you back for more fresh bread on Thursday. Until then, this is Pastor Phil Anderson of Oakland and Kansas Avenue Churches here in Topeka. Wishing you a great day. God bless you. And we'll hope to see you back tomorrow for more fresh bread.